Now today we'll be looking at a special report from Microsoft and for those of us uh, who use Microsoft operating systems you very well know that Microsoft is one of the big players out there in the industry of software applications. Now the other thing is that computer science is only theoretical or abstract until it is applied into human life or something useful to the human um, in your society. Microsoft uh, of late has created uh, uh, some categories of applications of artificial intelligence and um, some of them are AI, artificial intelligence for it, that's for the world, and the second one is artificial intelligence for accessibility which has to do with connectivity and the likes. The third one is for humanitarian, uh, artificial intelligence for humanitarian purposes such as uh, refugees and the likes. And then the fourth one is the cultural heritage that focuses on history of human um, life on earth and how it has grown over time. Now the, the most recent one that was introduced into this category is um, Microsoft Artificial Intelligence for Health. And that is the basic or that is the focus of this video. I'm going to be taking you guys through um, some slides and you will be understanding how effectively and how powerfully um, application of computer science can be to the human life. Come along with me as I walk you through these slides. So then let's take a very brief look at these slides that uh, will be expounding on the Microsoft AI series. We are going to be focusing on AI for health. So then these are the major categories. You have AI for good uh, major categories uh, listed as the earth, accessibility, humanitarian, cultural heritage and of course health now for AI for earth you have climate agricultural processes or activities then you have biodiversity then of course you have water under the accessibility AI for accessibility you have employment daily life communication and of course connection for humanitarian AI for humanitarian we have disaster response refugees and displaced people human rights and of course the needs of children okay for cultural heritage AI for cultural heritage you have um, people places languages and artifacts now the focus of this video is the health this health uh, category now the AI for health um, is revolving around discovery global health insights and of course health equity next still on the AI for health you have health data opportunities actual health data health data exposed to machine learning health data in the hands of innovators scalable healthcare innovation so now uh, furthermore we talk about health data formats Microsoft m talked about uh, interoperability and this has to do with connectivity between layers you know ability to uh, for one layer to succeed the other then of course compliance compliance has to do with uh, rules and regulations regarding uh, data access then privacy. Privacy, of course, is important because it revolves around uh, being able to protect the target population being studied, individual or personal information involved. Then finally, under that uh, subcategory, we have the security aspect of that data. Okay, so let's move on now to the typical examples given by this presentation. 
Microsoft mentioned uh, adaptive immune system and they talked about blood samples being taken from uh, a hospital lab that contains T cells specifically programmed or to attack specific antigen yes actually a blood when a blood sample is taken from a hospital the T cells has a, a, a sort of white blood cells and they are actually naturally programmed in every human body to uh, protect uh, against a um, specific antigen or maybe carrier of disease now the next important thing that was mentioned there was that a proprietary sequencing technology does print out the genetic composition of the extracellular receptors of the t-cells which of course is the white blood cell now the question now is can artificial intelligence point out to know more of the disease and immune system capabilities of the human body such as to resist such health threats now the next thing that was mentioned here is that the answer to the above research question could bring about early diagnostic tools for infectious disease of course with the help of artificial intelligence which we'll be talking about next now the next thing example that was given is concerning cancer treatment and here is the statement of the problem there is a huge disconnect perhaps disparity between published abstracts slash research papers and clinical administration or call it administration you know cancer molecular boards with oversight on cancer treatment now the question now is how can molecular tumor boards trying to make match between specific genetic shape of a patient with cancer and of course the cancer disease itself okay draw benefits from the knowledge being generated by these published works in other words how can um the genetic shape of existing cases you know of patients with this ailment okay how can correlation be drawn between their issues their health issues and the constantly growing or exponentially growing scale of published works or new knowledge in line with that same ailment i hope you understand that now they now mentioned that artificial intelligence powered machine learning or reading can augment human tumor board efforts and of course pull the benefits from the latest published works leaving no force behind such that you know it can encode superpower cancer treatment in the future in other words as the growth of published works goes on on one hand it can be correlated perfectly with current cases okay of this ailment and reduce the mortality or the um, health dangers associated with this particular ailment. In the third example, um, focus was placed on child mortality and the statement of the problem is that there is need to also correlate between smoking mothers and child mortality. Okay. Secondly, it is imperative to solve the mysteries of neurological disorders in children stemming possibly from maternal smoking habits during gestation. Now, the method is very, very, you know, it's quite interesting. Now, the method is that using genetic patient data to recognize child at risk with the help of OpenCV, that's a scientific algorithm okay, that uh, aids computer vision. This ably is done through feature recognition algorithms which can accurately observe and report probabilities of a child having neurological disorders or perhaps mortality this information can actually help to prevent further loss besides its ability to recognize babies at risk so the final examples given uh, was divided between uh, leprosy treatment and diabetic retinopathy treatments. Now, the 
fact of the problem in this category is that these ailments are still an issue to the human race okay then artificial intelligence can accelerate early diagnosis to prevent neurological damage due to leprosy and of course applying machine learning based diabetic retinopathy um, AI models can close the gap with up to 97% accuracy be at par or outperform ophthalmologists observations of these patients so finally in conclusion Microsoft talked about privacy issues such that artificial intelligence can only strive better when inaccessible barriers relating to data sharing restraints and privacy are both rightly tackled. Then it mentioned uh, data collaborations as pathways to work together as you know, desirable if artificial intelligence has to break the frontiers of to these barriers. Then of course uh, they mentioned differential privacy as a provision to a pathway for researchers to gain access from data without privacy infringement. Yeah, so that concludes the video for today. I hope you enjoyed those slides. One of the most interesting part of Microsoft Artificial Intelligence for Health was the aspect that focuses on child mortality. You know, a lot of mothers, a lot of uh, young ladies do not know how dangerous smoking can be to their unborn children. But this has given us a little bit of insight into how artificial intelligence knowledge in computer science when applied to artificial intelligence can be life-saving to an unborn child. I hope you enjoyed today's video and please remember to subscribe, comment and share this video. Until next time, cheers and all the best.